Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So let me start today's video by asking you a very important question. The question is that should you be catching a falling knife in the stock market? Now many of you might be new, you would say, Akshat, can you briefly explain what falling knife means? So here is the quick explanation. So falling knife theory simply means that if you buy a particular stock, let's say ITC, it falls by 10%, you think that, hey, this stock is great, let me buy some quantity. So you go and invest, 1000 rupees in it. Then ITC falls by another 10%. Then you go and invest even more money on it. Then it falls by another 10% and you go and invest even more money on it. So this is a falling knife and you're catching it and the stock keeps on going down. So is this a good buying opportunity or you have ended up purchasing some bad asset that will cut your hand because you're trying to catch a falling knife. So this is the falling knife theory. Let me know in the comment box, should you be catching a falling knife or not? Now here is my thorough explanation on this topic by using one of Peter Lynch's quote. So this is a very important quote that was given by Peter Lynch and for people who do not know who Peter Lynch is, so Peter Lynch is a macro investor. He is extremely skilled at its trade and the way he explains about stock market, it is worth listening to. So his quote says, if you can follow only one bit of data, just one bit of data, follow the earnings. I subscribe to the crusty notion that sooner or later, Earnings make or break an investment in equities. What the stock price does today, very important part, what the stock price does today, tomorrow or next week is only a distraction. Now what can you infer out of this? So you can infer two things out of this. One, really good stocks, they can be trading low. The prices of those stocks can be low and they can be undervalued, right? And second thing, bad stocks, the prices can be high and they can be overvalued as per Peter Lynch's philosophy. Now, how does he define good stocks or bad stocks? For that, you need to understand his entire philosophy. But one key parameter that he has given is that, hey, please go and follow earnings. If the company is making good revenues, then automatically things will be taken care of. I will add one more perspective to it because there are a lot of tech companies now that their revenues are good, but their profits are not there. So if a company is making really good revenues, profits are there, and even if the stock price is falling, it's a great opportunity to buy. And this is one of the key principles that I use in terms of purchasing the stock. On the flip side, there are companies like Paytm or Zomato. Their profits are just not there, right? They are negative profitable companies. They are selling stuff, but they are not being able to consolidate their business model. So according to me, those type of businesses should be avoided by retail investors. Can you still make a lot of money by Zomato or Paytm? Yes, you can, but that's not the game that I would recommend you to play because that is what catching a falling knife means according to me. So on this video, I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to give you a macroeconomic analysis where we stand because a lot of you have said that Akshat, have you just turned bearish on the market? Are you still bullish? Because previously you used to say that you're bullish. So can you do a little bit of commentary there? So I'm going to do that. Second, I'm going to tell you two great opportunities in terms of catching this falling knife because these two stocks are falling as I'm shooting this video today on 9th December. And there's a great buying opportunity in both these stocks according to me. So I'll have a discussion around that. Just a very quick shout out to our sponsors for today, which is Vested. I absolutely love their product. I do my US stock investing via Vested. You can check the links in the description box for a special offer. Now, let me very quickly speak about the macroeconomics first and then discuss the two buying opportunities. So let us take a look at the US stock market first because the same indicators are applicable to the Indian stock market also. So I'm looking at S&P 500. So if you take a look at 200 day, 50 and 100 day moving average, the current price is here and these are the moving averages line. So the current price is closing consistently above all these three averages. So the long term pattern or the long term trend right now is still very much bullish, right? I'm absolutely not bearish and I have never been bearish about the market. I still continue to maintain that we are in a bull pattern and we will continue to be in a bull pattern. This is the technical indicator. Let me talk about the fundamental indicator behind it. So for that, let us try to understand it from US bond market. So let us take a look at 25 year perspective and I'm here on trading economics. This is a website that you can use. So what do you notice in 2002, the bond yield was approximately five and a half percent, right? Five and a half percent. It has the trend line is this and it is very much the current trend very much respects this line, right? Now, why is this such a big deal? Because what happens is that there is a bond market and then there is a stock market. Now, every time the yield of the bonds go up, yield simply means that the return, for example, if your FD returns right now are at, let's say, five and a half percent, right? If they suddenly get spiked to, let's say, seven percent, then will you not move your money from stock market to bond market? The answer is yes, you will do it, right? 
Similarly, if your FD rates are further cut from 5.5% to let's say 4%, then you will say that, okay, you know what, what's the point of even going to a bank, doing this FD, this is stupidity, let me just move all my money to the stock market. So you will end up putting a lot of money in the stock market. Now, I can cover a lot many points about the bond market, but to cut the long discussion short and to simplify everything, so you can clearly see that from 2009 onwards, there has been a very clear downtrend in the bond market. Now, people have no other option but to move their money to stocks and one more category is their cryptos. So, the money is clearly moving from bond market to stock markets and bond market to crypto market. There is relentless buying of assets that is happening. Asset prices are inflating and they will continue to inflate. And the government is trying very, very hard to bring in tapering and do it as fast as they can. But from 2008 to 2016, we tried to do away with the quantitative easing by undertaking tapering, right? So government will first do quantitative easing and then they will end up doing tapering. So we tried doing it from 2008 to 2016-17. The entire semantics were not completed. Then we had another crisis, another round of quantitative easing or rather multiple rounds of quantitative easing that were injected. Now we are again in that situation. So even the previous run of quantitative easing has not been withdrawn from the market. So therefore the market outlook at least for the next 5-7 years is very very bullish from that perspective. Then you will say Akshat then why is the fall there because for the simple fact that markets when they give an up they are going to fall a little bit right. It's not as if that the markets are now going to correct by 60-70-80% that is not going to happen. There is going to be 15-20 correction any point in time right. So please don't consider that fall as an end of the bull run. Okay, so please don't do that. I am bullish. I am very much bullish. I have always been bullish and I will continue to be bullish about this. Okay, so in the short term, right, so we have spoken about the long term, long term trend bullish. What about the short term? Short term, if you find these 15-20% correction, at least I am buying more stocks. I am buying fundamentally sound stocks. According to me, that is not catching a falling knife as long as your stock picks are good. So right now you will feel in the market that if you take a look at fear and greed index, you will see that there is a lot of fear in the market right now. Now, according to Mr. Warren Buffett, there is a quote that he gave that, hey, be greedy when everyone is fearful and be fearful when everyone is greedy. In simple terms, he is simply saying that whenever this dial hits the red mark, go and buy stuff. When this dial hits the extreme green mark, you should try to lighten your position because everyone is in euphoria mode and the market will pop at any time. So this is a good time to book profits. And this is a good time to figure out undervalued stocks and buy stuff, right? Now, why is this such an important notion? So let me take you through this entire chart. So if you see in 2020, extreme fear here. So if you would have purchased, the market rallied from here. Right now, extreme fear, the chances are that the markets are again going to rally, right? So the bottom line is that you should buy when others are not buying, when others are fearful. That is how you will make money as a retail investor and that is the reason why for the last month or so I have been buying relentlessly. Okay, so now let me enter the stock discussion and please don't run away after hearing the first name because the second stock is an Indian stock. So the first stock I am going to talk about is Alibaba. I have already bought it. I have made a separate video on this. You can check it here. But today, this is an updated version of Alibaba. So please listen to the conversation and do watch the second stock. That is the Indian stock that I'm talking about. In case you're not interested in Alibaba, no problem. You can skip this section, but I would still urge you to listen to it because there are very important lessons hidden here. If you take a look at the stock performance in the last one year, the stock has corrected by 50%, 5-0%. Is this a falling knife? Because the last I purchased this stock, the stock has fallen more. So am I purchasing something which is a falling knife? Maybe, maybe not. Let's have a discussion around it. So I've collated some really important points, but before I take you there, let me just very, very quickly take you through the finances of Alibaba. So if you take a look from March 17 to March 21, consistent rise in total revenues, net income, right? Net income has also risen, right? It has fallen from this point to this point in the last one year. I will explain that also, but it's not as if that this is a loss making company or the revenues are not growing. This is a solid company from a financial point of view. The stock is available at 50% discount. Now, here are other important points about Alibaba. You can also watch my previous video. I have covered some of these points there. The first key point that is there is that Alibaba has significantly undertaken international expansion of clients. More than 20 million of their customers are now from outside China. The customer growth outside China has been much faster. So it is not completely China dependent. This is a great point. This is a strong fundamental point about the business. Second thing, its cloud enterprise business vis-a-vis -vis its e-commerce business is growing. 
This is very similar to the growth trajectory of Amazon because in Amazon it has AWS and it has its e-commerce business. The AWS business for Amazon is more profitable compared to its e-commerce business. The same situation is playing out in Alibaba and guess what? Alibaba is called the Amazon of China. Now many of you would say that hey what Akshat, China, bad stock, this, that, lot of negative commentary around China, we don't know what is happening in China such a closed economy, they are doing a bunch of bad, bad stuff. So why is it that you're still bullish? Okay, so there are a lot of things that are going on in China and that is precisely the reason why this stock has taken so much beating. So the first key issue that is happening in China right now is the Chinese regulatory changes. So what has China done is they have cracked down on technology stock. They are trying to break apart monopolies. They are trying to centralize a lot of processes and systems. This is not just happening in tech. This is happening in everything. There are some structural changes that are happening in China. There have been supply chain disruptions. Call it their post-COVID business strategy. Okay, This might work great for China. We don't know how it would work for other countries. But that is what they are doing. It's a natural part of their business transformation. That's point one. And that's one of the reasons why the stock has already tanked because there is no clarity and people just hate uncertainty. We don't know how things are going to pan out. Very recently, there was a company called as Didi. It's a tech company which is listed on US stock exchange and it got delisted and it just created panic, right? Everyone started panicking that, you know what, Didi got delisted. So, so every single company of China that is listed on US stock exchange is also going to get delisted. Bad stuff is going to happen to Alibaba. Maybe, maybe not. Let's do a more thorough analysis. Okay, so delisting happens for two reasons. One is that if China decides or China puts pressure on its companies to delist from US exchanges, right? Second is if US decides to push these companies out of US stock exchanges by bringing in additional rules and regulations. So let's understand both these points. Number one, in case of DD, do Chinese authorities want Chinese company not to be listed on the US stock exchange? The answer is absolutely no, right? There is no benefit for China to do that. And it's just pure madness. Now, this point has been reaffirmed by the Chinese authority. Now, this is a statement that was released by the Chinese spokesperson and their government. And it clearly says that recently some overseas media reported that Chinese regulators will ban overseas listing of companies with VIE structure and demand Chinese companies to delist from US stock exchanges, which is a complete misunderstanding and misinterpretation. See, there is absolutely no benefit for China to delist their companies from the US. It's, they are not winning anything out of it. So that is point number one. Point number two, you will say that, okay, Akshat, then DD got delisted. What happened there? So, okay. In DD's case was slightly different. DD basically was very eager to get listed on the US stock exchanges in the first place. The Chinese authorities first told DD that, hey, you know what, you guys wait, we will clear the regulations. Wait, do not try to get listed in the US stock exchanges. They'll say that, you know what, we don't care, we are going to get listed. So they went against the Chinese authorities. It was not a very well thought out process from DD's part. Alibaba has been a very old listed company in the US. Alibaba's case is completely different. They have done their listing in the first place in the US more sensibly. So it's highly unlikely that it will get delisted from the Chinese authority. But what about US? Can US regulators delist Chinese companies? Yes, maybe they can do that. No doubt about that. But here, there's a very important point that you need to understand that US is a free market economy. They do not unnecessarily kick people out and create closed economies. US has thrived on capitalism. There is absolutely no benefit for the US to kick out Chinese company. Forget about Alibaba. Alibaba is a big player, right? So it's like apex when it comes to Chinese stock listed companies in the US. So Alibaba is a major player from that perspective. Yes, the US regulators can put in certain conditions, regulations on companies like Alibaba to do better reporting and the auditing framework for Alibaba, there is absolutely no problem with it. They are already working with top auditors in the US to meet all these compliances. So it's not a new company that got listed that will get delisted and all that. So please don't worry about it from that perspective. Now recently, another issue that cropped up was around the Chinese debt issue. So you might have seen that Evergrande defaulted on its Chinese debt problem that again created the entire ruckus that you know what entire China is going to go bankrupt. China has given loans to the entire world. It's still a very solid economy just because one company is defaulting does not mean that the entire China is defaulting on debt. But this is being played out in the media and Chinese stocks are taking a lot of thrashing. Finally, you need to understand the point that even very recently in the last cycle itself, Alibaba has invested $1.6 billion in companies like Lazada and bunch of different different good organizations. If you take that money out, then their net profits 
amount to six billion dollar, which is akin to last year. Despite all these problems that I've spoken about, if you say that okay, we are going to aggregate this investment amount into the current bottom line, then the total profits come out to be still six billion. So even finance point of view, it has not shrunk. The profits have not shrunk. Even from that perspective, the profits have not shrunk. So is this a falling knife? Should you catch it? Falling knife. The answer is. You tell me in the comments. I am actually investing in it. Take small, small positions. Continue to take it because the stock is trading at 50% discount. Right, the moment any positive commentary comes from the US or China about a company like Alibaba, this stock will become a rocket. I am telling you that, and therefore I am taking positions in something like Alibaba. What are some of the other value buying opportunities that I see in US right now? I am seeing Amazon. I'll make a separate video on that if you want. There is Amazon. There is Visa. There is Coinbase. All these are good companies, as per my understanding. Okay. So now let's talk about an Indian stock, which is a falling knife right now, right? So here we will talk about Hindustan Unilever. Now a lot of people are panicking that here, Akshay, Hindustan Unilever has fallen. Will it continue to fall? So let me first and foremost show you at what price Hindustan Unilever is available right now, right? So we are trading here now, right? And if I draw a horizontal line, right, you will clearly see this, right? You will clearly see this, right? This is pre-pandemic level, right? This is exactly where the fall started to happen. So the stock, after one year, nine months, right, it is available at the same price, right, as it was available pre-pandemic, right? Now this is amazing, right? If you take a look at the numbers for Hindustan Unilever, what will you see? What will you see? So pre-pandemic, let's take a look, right? So March 2019, almost 40,000 in revenues, right? Last TTM, last trailing 12 month, 49,000 in sales, right? And what about profits? Profits have also risen pre-pandemic levels by a lot, right? So the profits have been up. Any major changes that has happened or that has come up for a company like Hindustan Unilever? The answer is absolutely yes, right? One macro change that has happened for a stock like Hindustan Unilever is that there is going to be high inflation in the economy. What does that do? That simply does not diminish the demand for non-elastic demand goods. For example, if Hindustan Unilever sells what? Hindustan Unilever sells something like a shampoo. It's not as if that because the shampoo prices have risen from 200 to 250, middle class people will stop using shampoo. So this has a non-elastic demand component. Many of the HUL products, we are not going to suffer at all from that perspective. This is clearly seen. This is absolutely clearly seen by the fact that 10-15% rise for HUL products have already taken place. This has happened, right? I've made a separate video on that. You can check it that Hindustan Unilever has increased the product prices of its products by 10 to 15% in this last quarter itself. This will reflect into increased sales, increased profits. Then what? I talked about prices. They are available at a pre-pandemic level. So does this become like a falling knife right now, right? Falling knife right now. The answer is absolutely not. In my opinion, I am aggregating it in heavy quantities. And if you take a look at management discussion analysis, this was a very important point that was highlighted. That HUL sees six mega consumer trends in the next decade. One is that consumers moving away from stereotypes. Okay, what does this mean? It simply means that they are not going to just buy a shampoo. They are going to buy a Lux shampoo or whatever, Lux soap, right? So they are going to go buy brands, right? Second, they look for authenticity, right? So natural and local products because there is a lot of awareness around that, hey, we should be using herbal, we should be using these health oriented products, not too much chemicals, whatnot, right? So this is the second thing. Hyper personalization, this is very, very important. Now what this leads to is something called as customer segmentation, right? For example, a company like HUL, they can release something called as SKUs, right? So SKUs mean stock keeping unit. They will release one shampoo for people with white hair. They will release one shampoo for men. They will release one shampoo for kids. They will release one shampoo for, you know, another category of people that they are able to segregate. So this is called as customer segregation and you need a lot of data for that. So therefore, this digital adoption becomes really important because you have to release all these different products, market it really well, make it available on the stores, bunch of different, different things. So top firms are going to thrive in such an environment and HUL by default is one of such firms and they are going to thrive in this economy and market. And the best part is that this is backed by real revenues and profits. I also feel that banks right now and EMC companies right now are available at a discount. 
and I'm buying these sectors quite heavily. I have started rotating some of my capital into these sectors. So in summary, let me know how do you define a falling knife. According to me, falling knife is nothing but it's just a phrase. You need to go in depth in every stock and try to understand why the stock price has fallen. If the stock price has fallen due to some fundamental reasons and if the stock has corrected and the company can come back from there, it's not a falling knife. It's a great opportunity to buy as per my understanding. I hope you will develop more nuanced knowledge on it. Please do not consider my recommendation as an advice to buy. I'm just telling you whatever I'm doing in the market. You can take your own position. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and I will see you the next time.